Hello and welcome to this tutorial in which I will give you some details about the synchronization process and mechanisms that are implemented in the Nautilus remote app to ensure that what you see on the iPad is always consistent with what you see on the Nautilus screen. So let's get right started and connect the Nautilus. It's, um, you can see here, connected with the USB and the Nautilus device shows up in this window. So we can connect and now everything is in sync. So even if we change the preset, we can see that the values are now also identical on both sides. And um, I mean, there's these uh, menu pages on the app and the different modes that are supported, editing capabilities and all the stuff, which is nice, but it's only working if what you see is also reflecting what you have on the instrument as well. So if those um, volumes here are not matching, then um, it doesn't, it's not really useful. So the key to the app being um, useful in any way is that those parameters are always in sync. And I can tell you there's tons of parameters in the Nautilus because um, if you did some in-depth editing here, you know what I'm talking about. There are so many menu pages and so many things that you can set up and that you can um, obviously need to store in the end, so many parameters. So this means that um, if we open a certain preset here, we need to have all this information already displayed on the iPad because you don't want to transfer a huge bunch of information every time you switch the presets. Of course, technically you could do it. So this means that you switch the, the, the preset and then it's downloading the, the respective content and all the stuff, but it's not a very nice way of working. You will actually see how, it, how this would look like in a minute. But essentially what we want to have is we want to have the data consistent in the first place and only exchange data once we move a slider, then of course data needs to be transmitted. And um, yeah, but essentially the, the big bunch of parameters we want to have here already. And this is why we do a synchronization, which means that the iPad is downloading the actual data from the Nautilus once, and then it stores it locally. And as long as there is no discrepancy between those data, um, it will work on the local data. So what that means is that uh, we disconnect for a moment. So you can see there is no connection between both instruments, um, the iPad and the instrument anymore. And if we switch a preset here, you can see that it still changes and it's updating the values. And um, if we do the same thing on the Nautilus, it's here. Um, those values should be consistent because what we downloaded on the iPad beforehand is still matching what is on the Nautilus. But what happens if you did some edit on the Nautilus and uh, you, had, you didn't have the iPad connected? And I did that on, we are now on bank A and I did the exactly this thing on bank B. So if we connect now, there is a message up here saying that one bank is out of sync and we have this handy sync state page here that shows us that all the banks are okay, except combi bank B, which is not in sync. So this means something has changed in the bank B. We don't know exactly what has changed because you would need to download all parameters, compare everything. So um, something is wrong in bank B and the app um, has seen this. And if we now work on bank A, obviously no problem because it's in sync, but if we switch to some preset in bank B, <coughs> you will see um, that there's this loading bar in the top, which is showing up. So every time that we are changing the preset on the iPad, it's actually downloading the entire preset from the, um, from the Nautilus first, because the app knows that something in this bank has changed. Maybe it's not this preset, maybe this was in sync, but we don't know it. So we download it from the, download it from the Nautilus. And this happens every time we change um, the preset. So in the USB connection, if we are connected with USB, this is uh, not too bad. So it works. But if you would be, um, let's say, connected with the, with the Bluetooth connection, this is um, significantly slower than the USB connection. And then it would be really annoying if you change something and you need to wait like four or five seconds until um, everything has synchronized properly and the data has been updated. So we don't want this <clears throat> so the best thing in um, this situation that you can do is to actually sync this ba this bank. So this means that um, you do a one-time process, you download the entire bank again to the iPad, 
This takes a couple of seconds, but you do it once and afterwards everything is in sync again and the iPad does not need to re-download the single presets anymore. But before we do this, let me show you one um, other detail that only becomes apparent in this situation. Because, um, as I said, if we select a new preset, we have this um, uh, delay of downloading the actual data before it can be presented. And what happens if we do this, if we switch quickly multiple presets? Uh, normally, this would mean that the iPad would we switch once, the iPad starts to download the data, then we switch to the next preset, the iPad starts to download the next data, and there will be a lot of communication going on, a lot of data being queued, and it will at some point block the Nautilus from operating properly. It will probably block the iPad at some point as well. And this is not a very nice user experience because if you change 10 presets, you then need to wait until 10 presets have been downloaded. And imagine this in the Bluetooth situation where it's even slower. Um, this is not so not very nice. So what is happening is that if we change a preset, the app waits about a second before it actually starts to download the data. So this explains that we usually have this one second delay <clears throat> before the data has been updated. Um, and this is simply uh, to wait if we continue switching the presets. So if I switch now and I wait, then it's going to be downloaded and I switch again, I have another download. So um, at some point I need to download the data for sure. But if I switch quickly, you can see that there is no communication happening. There is no progress bar on the top. There is no information window on the Nautilus. And only if I stop switching, then it's transmitting the data and synchronizing. And it's the same on the iPad side. If I um, use this one to, to go down here, there is nothing exchanged except as I stop and then it's downloading the respective data and updating the content again. So this is, um, I think, the best solution that we can have in the situation where we don't know if the data is in sync and we need to download big bunches of data. Um, this is how it works right now. And uh, by the way, if we use this mode here to select a certain preset, then also the there is a program change to the Nautilus so that it will stay in sync and Hopefully it also works in the other direction. Yes, it does. But there is no data exchanged. Um, this way it is. But if we select something here, there is no data exchanged unless we hit OK and then we are downloading the data. So um, the entire concept with delays and stuff is just aiming at keeping the communication between the iPad and the Nautilus to a minimum for the situation that you have a low bandwidth in a, in a Bluetooth connection, for example. And maybe if you have a very complex MIDI setup, it might also be disturbing if two devices are exchanging big object dumps all the time. Um, but there is some information that we need to exchange that we cannot go around. So at some point we need to download it. And um, yeah, then quickly let me show you how to synchronize. You can either go to the sync state page and you can see that this combi B is already pre-selected because it's not in sync. And you can hit the resync button and then it will download the entire bank. And you can also, if you, um, if you connect the Nautilus, there's this information in the top, one bank is out of sync and you can hit sync now button. Um, and then it will also download combi bank B and it will skip all the other banks that are already in sync. So you're done very quickly. And now let's go to the sync stage. Bank B is also in sync, everything is in sync. So this means if we switch um, a preset now. There is no downloading of the data, but instead the iPad can again work on the local data. There is still this one second delay before it actually loads the data. Um, and we can can optimize this a bit more in the future to keep the, the delay down. But even if you do um, quick changes here, you don't want to update all the graphical elements all the time and reload data. So a small delay is for sure a good thing. Um, but we don't need to exchange data right now anymore here. So this is some technical background information regarding how the synchronization process works, but I think it's pretty handy um, at some points to understand how the data is exchanged to also understand why it sometimes takes a second and um, maybe it helps you to, to understand why or how, how it works to keep both screens in sync and what's the, the idea behind it. All right, thanks for watching and enjoy the app. Have a good time, bye.